Now you see it, now you don't. I will understand how heat energy can affect the movement of particles in matter. So let's heat a beaker containing ice and record the changes in temperature. So you're probably aware that when we heat a beaker with ice in it, the ice is a solid. So the particles are arranged in a regular pattern. They are very close together and they are vibrating around a fixed position. As we heat the ice, it will start to melt. So the particles will lose their fixed pattern. They will stay close together, but they will be able to roll past each other within the shape of the container. And as we continue to increase the heat energy, we will start to boil the liquid water so that these particles can now escape from the body of the liquid, become gas, and be able to zoom very fast and very far apart from each other in the form of steam. So when we look at the movement of particles, these images show that the solid ice, the particles, the water molecules, are held in a fixed position, but they're not still. They're actually vibrating all the time around that fixed position. And as we heat them, they actually vibrate faster and faster. And eventually they get to a point where they can break away from their neighbors and become a liquid. So here you'll see the particles are still moving. They're rolling around past each other quite quickly, but they're staying within the body of the liquid. And as we heat the liquid, they will roll around past each other faster and faster until eventually they get enough energy to be able to break free from the surface of the liquid and become gas. And you can see these particles, they would actually be zooming even faster than this image shows. They're zooming, they're very far spaced apart. They have a lot of heat energy in this form as a gas. And this image shows um, it too. So we've got, starting at the end here, so we'll just wait for it to, to restart. We start at the beginning with a solid and the particles are vibrating. And as you heat and you heat, you'll notice the solid doesn't fill the edges of the container. Um, eventually the particles break away from their neighbors. They start rolling past each other, keep heating and heating, and eventually they can escape from the body of the liquid and become gas particles with all this energy moving at great speeds far apart from each other. So let's go back to our idea of um, heating ice in a beaker and let's have a look at the temperature changes. So that's what this graph is showing us here. Starting off on the left hand side at the bottom we're starting off with ice as a solid at a very cold temperature. It's minus 40 degrees centigrade and as we heat the ice the temperature of the ice is changing, it's increasing, but it's still a solid. So what's happening here is the particles are vibrating. So even at minus 40, they're still vibrating and they're moving around their fixed position, but they get to a point at zero where they break away from their neighbors. And that's called melting when the solid turns into a liquid. And you'll notice that the temperature does not change whilst the solid is melting. That's because the energy is being used not to make the particles move faster, but to make the particles break away from their neighbor. Once it's a liquid, once the liquid water is being heated, you'll notice the temperature increases again, gets hotter, 20 degrees, 40 degrees, 60 degrees, 80 degrees, and those liquid, the particles inside the liquid water, they are moving past each other faster and faster. And when it hits 100 degrees centigrade, or 100 degrees Celsius, now we are changing the liquid into a gas. So now the heat energy that's being put into the water isn't being used to heat the water, it's being used to change its state from a liquid into a gas. And then we can superheat the gas, the gas getting the steam is getting hotter and hotter once those particles are broken free from the liquid. So you'll notice Ice is melting at zero degrees C, water is boiling at 100 degrees C, and the temperature does not change during melting and boiling. So that's because, as I said, the heat energy is being used to change the state. So solid is a state, 
Liquid is a state and gas is a state. So during melting, the heat energy is being used to break the particles from their fixed position. And during boiling, the heat energy is breaking the particles from the body of the liquid. When we were heating the solid, its temperature rose before it started to melt. And that's because the heat energy was being absorbed by the particles and they, they vibrate around their fix, fixed positions more vigorously. Each particle has more kinetic or movement energy. And the solid will also expand whilst that's happening. If we look at this graphic, we've got a picture of two solids here. This solid is slightly colder than this solid. But you'll notice that the particles are still in a fixed position in both pictures. It's just that this slightly colder solid, the, the, the vibrations aren't quite so vigorous. Here we've got vigorous vibrations, but each particle is still staying in a fixed position. It's just vibrating a little bit further. And because it's vibrating further, it's actually pushing the whole shape of the solid, taking up a bigger space, and that's called expansion. So the particles themselves are the same size, it's just the amount of room that they take up has changed and it has increased at a higher temperature. So liquids also get hotter and they expand before they begin to boil. Their particles are moving faster within the body of the liquid and each particle has more kinetic or movement energy. The liquid expands and remember the particles are the same size, they're just moving in a bigger space. So now we're going to have a think about what's the difference between boiling and evaporation. Both of these describe the change of state from liquid to gas. But in this diagram, it shows that boiling is when the whole body of liquid tries to become a gas at once or fairly close together, whereas evaporation is only happening from the surface of the liquid. So when we go the opposite way, we'll meet some different words here. If we start off with um, steam, as we cool the steam, it's called condensation. It becomes a liquid. And then if we cool it further, it freezes to become a solid. So as we move down from the gas through to the solid, the energy, um, the heat energy is decreasing. And we can show this in a similar graph to the last one. So we start off with a very hot gas, we cool it, it condenses and as it changes uh, state, it, there is no drop in temperature. But now we have a liquid, we can cool the liquid until it starts to change state and become a solid and ice. And then we can cool the solid once we have a solid formed. And you'll see here that cooling it, melting point and freezing point are the same temperature. And the boiling point and the condensing point are the same temperature, 100 degrees C there. So, have we understood how heat energy can affect the movement of particles in matter? So you should be able now to define evaporation, condensation, boiling, melting and freezing. You should be able to describe the movement of particles as matter gets hotter. And you should be able to explain how solids turn into liquids, how liquids turn into gases, and how that happens in reverse. <laughs>